I see all these people flipping out about these cartoon apes. And I'm like, what? What are these apes? Like, what is going on? One of the best things that NFTs have brought to the table is they have made collecting so accessible to people. All my early collectors are OGs in my mind. But for me, art is like a need. It's not a want. And collecting is just another form of that. I clicked really fast on the people drop. And I actually managed to get it for $1. If I've collected your work, I'm holding it with diamond hands. If you're collecting something, it could become hot in two minutes or 200 years. Welcome to The Collector's Call, where we chat about art with the top collectors and creators in Web3. I'm your host, Scooter, and today my guest is Judith Sepiold with The Crypto Sticker Thing, a recently launched collaborative collection of unique physical and digital crypto art. This collection includes stickers, display boxes, collecting books, as well as ordinals. We also have joining us a number of artists whose work is featured in the collection, including Empress Trash, Angie Taylor, Reinhard Schmidt, and Felix Felix Felix. Without further ado, let's dive into this conversation. Thank you to everyone for joining us for this conversation on crypto sticker culture. For a bit of a roadmap, we'll talk about the idea behind the crypto sticker thing to start, and then we'll hear from some of the artists on their works that are featured in this collection. And we'll dive into a broader conversation around the significance of making, sharing, and collecting stickers in the crypto art space. Why don't we dive in, Judith, with a question for you. You're one of the founders behind the crypto sticker thing, and this isn't your first Web3 endeavor. Can you tell us a bit about yourself and your interests in the crypto art space? Yes, sure. Hi, everybody. Nice to be here tonight. I'm active in the space since 17. I was originally more interested in coins and I read a lot in Reddit about yeah, crypto technology and possibilities behind. Twitter was also a very, very good source to get information back then. And yeah, the the, pay, the the space was very small back then. It was really nice. You could contact basically anybody in the space ask questions and, and talk about their projects. And it was really interesting because you got really first-hand information from, from so many people who are in the meantime also yeah on big business. I guess the first thing I came across which was related to NFTs was ENS domains. And I spent <laughs> really a lot of time in front of my computer to, to buy these domains. I got there yeah, quite a few, but yeah, don't own them any longer. The next things I guess were the CryptoPunks and Dada, CryptoCats, CryptoKitties, Mooncats, later non-origin super rare, all these new things popped up. And it was simply cool to to interact with with these yeah, smart contracts to press a button to spend really not a lot of money back then and get an image in your wallet. It, it, it was just nice for me, you know, no idea about art or well, collecting stuff. It was just trying out new things. In early 2018, I was in New York for the first Rare Art Festival and it was just Great. You know, it was so many people from different spaces. The traditional art world was there and also the crypto guys who were doing stuff with images. And it was so inspiring that I came back from this event and decided, hey, I have to do something, you know. I was already interested in which projects were developed at that time more in the NFT area, and I just did a collection of projects from, I guess, 17 to 18, 19 to 19, and I called it BAD, the blockchain art directory. That was what I did in 18, 19, and yeah, since then, I'm more or less active in, in the space. That's my, that's my story. Thanks for that introduction. I've pinned here a link to to Bad for anyone uh, who's unfamiliar with it. Great, I think one of the earliest integrated spaces to find a variety of um, artist backgrounds and links to their works. And it, it is it, it's a nice feels like a decentralized curated platform, which I feel like we're still looking for to some degree. So hopefully people can rediscover this. 
Uh, you didn't mention the the pizza dow involvement, uh, although I know that's yeah. that it's a part of your involvement as well. Yeah, right. <laughs> How do you know? No, I, I'm, yeah, really, I, I discovered the pizza dow in, was it 21? I don't know. And it was just at the beginning and I spent for so much time on the Discord and I read everything and yeah, finally everybody sold <laughs> and bought pizza at the Bitcoin pizza day then. And I, I yeah, I tried to find a pizza shop who wanted to participate, but they, I don't know, I, I guess they had the impression I want to rock them and they <laughs> didn't, didn't jump on the train. Yeah, that was my involvement with Pizza Dow, right? Eston Seven Slices. That's right. Yeah. Well, you've certainly got some uh, some street cred here within the Web three space. So thanks for sharing that background. But let's let's dive into your latest project, the crypto sticker thing. What inspired you to want to make a crypto art project based around stickers? First, we had the idea. My colleague Fabian and I, we are living in Switzerland, and we knew we would like to go to Art Basel and Basel this year. And our idea was originally to make a small off space with crypto art during Art Basel, but we were not sure how to present the art <clears throat> screens is yeah the common way you do it, but we wanted to do something different. So our first idea was to present crypto art in an off space analog, you know, uh, no screens, but yeah framing images was a little bit lame we thought and doing paper wallets uh, walls <laughs> not wallets paper walls would also be a little bit yeah maybe too complicated when you have to leave the space uh, clean again afterwards and then we had the idea to do it with stickers but we learned a lot after we had the idea for example that it's would involve too many too many artists and too much yeah activity and we had not the time to do it of course also budget issues because it's really expensive to have even an off space during art basel but still we wanted to do something and the idea to have stickers was was still in our mind so our next idea was to be present during Art Basel, but without a space, maybe with a bike, you know, and delivering crypto stickers like pizzas, maybe also in, in, in pizza boxes. But yeah, you also have to consider maybe potential collectors. And our impression was because these are people from traditional art, they would not really be interested in pizza boxes, but maybe in a more solid box, you know, and this was basically our idea or how, how it, how it came to, yeah, producing the, the crypto sticker box. You stuck a little bit with the, the pizza theme through delivering yeah. stickers by the box. It's, it's wonderful. It's really exciting. We've got lots to, to get into maybe just at a high level. Could you tell us what is involved in, in, I understand someone can order one of these crypto sticker boxes. They can also order a couple of other things through your site. What, what would they be purchasing and, and what does someone receive if they, if they order one of these items? Okay, we have basically two different products, if you would like to call them products. The, the, the main one is really the crypto sticker box, which we see not just, just as a box for holding artworks, but an artwork itself you know it has a concept and it is yeah really a lot is done by hand and stuff like this and the second one is really the crypto sticker book which is a totally different thing it's just a book where you can put your stickers in inside we have paper and we have also leaf with a material where you can uh, detach the stickers again you know and it's it's two totally different things one really concept and artwork and the other one is just to to support uh, people who would like to have something to collect their stickers into so when when you would would buy a box you would really get a big wooden box which has yeah dimensions also <laughs> i have to have a look 
I cannot remember this exactly. It's about uh, 40 centimeters square format and about 10 centimeters high. Within this box, you get a set of 20 stickers, 20 big stickers. They come in an edition of 20. And in addition to these 20 stickers, you get a unique small sticker and paper wallet to access an ordinal. The box also holds a small par parachute because we thought we would like to make the connection again to, to something digital, you know? Taking a sticker as a cultural artifact is one thing, but it's still related to blockchain and we wanted to have this relation also as a physical thing and then we had the idea to to make this ordinal to go full full circle and yeah you know it was just thinking about how to present all this and it's yeah and then we had the idea to do it really with a parachute because you know it's from the airdrop theme yeah that's that's basically what you get when you buy a box that's a wonderful summary. It really is exciting. It's hard to, it's always hard to try to put your finger on exactly what crypto art is, but this feels like something that perfectly illustrates the the ethos of this space. And I'm excited that uh, you and, and quite a number of artists have come together to push this into reality. We'll get into the artists after one last question here. I, I wanted to mentioned we've got a group of artists here today to talk about some of their works out of a full group of i think 21 that came together for this project some of the others who who aren't on our panel include Stina jones rick skrilla dark farms shortcut and the list goes on what was involved in collaborating with such a broad group and, and were there any curatorial practices that you used to to make sure that the artworks fit together yeah curation was of course needed you know our main, my main intention was really to find artists who are known in the space and who we know do stickers from time to time. <laughs> I was traveling, uh, not, not really traveling, but attending uh, some of the NFT conferences over the last three years. And yeah, when you meet artists and if you are lucky, they give you a sticker, you know. And I, I know some of the artists in person. Of some, I know that they are doing really colorful and and yeah, colorful motive, motives who are perfect for for stickers. You know, that was basically our main criterion. And yes, I contacted I guess about thirty five or even forty artists. Our aim was to have 21, and the ones we have now in the box are those who said yes, and we are really very happy about this. It's a, it's a perfect collection of, of people who are involved in this, lots of diverse types of art and backgrounds, and I'm happy to hear that sticker creation was part of the criteria that you used to invite people to participate. <laughs> Yes, yes, of course. Another criterion was, of course, to find, and, and I hope we did it, uh, find the balance between Ethereum and Bitcoin artists, because we didn't want to limit it just on one blockchain. And what we also did, but this comes from our idea to have the real physical event at Art Basel to involve especially Swiss artists. We have indeed three people from Switzerland in the box, which is a little bit <laughs> maybe maybe unfair, but it's it's coming from really our the, the history of this project, you know. And one of the artists is even one who never did NFT before. So it's really his introduction into the space, which is also quite nice. That is exciting. There's a range of experienced, established crypto artists and then some new as well. Also multiple chains represented from the primary medium that people use. It's so exciting. Let's let's dive into the art. I have Empress Trash up next on screen. You contributed the work Bitcoin Psychedelia, which I'll pull up here for this project. Could you tell us about that piece and maybe how it fits with your, your broader work? Yeah. So good morning, everyone. I'm just waking up. So if I'm a little weird and sleepy sorry but yeah first of all thanks judith for bringing us together like i i'm gonna say the platitudes before i talk about the art but 
like when actually it's funny when you say the sticker like i i'm i'm known as someone who makes stickers but actually when i met judith i didn't have stickers to give her because my purse just got stolen right before Paris. So it's kind of funny to me. Like that was something that was super sad for me because I didn't have stickers to give to people in Paris this year. And yeah, but I'm super excited to be in this box. I'm super excited for all the work that's in it and to be like so many of my friends are in it. And that's like always the most exciting thing for me is like when my art is with my friends and like we've been like all doing our thing and like building in kind of our own separate ways but we all still like come together th like for things like this and it's just always exciting for me my piece I mean like I tend to focus on the feminine form in general like in my work so I immediately went to that I was initially like thinking about doing like a pinup style like woman like a full body pinup style you know she has something with bitcoin or something but then when i was because this is ai mixed with like my glitch processing so when i actually was like doing the mid journey like going through and like trying to like figure out what i wanted to do this image came up and it just like struck me so hard like it's not a full body it's just the head but how like <laughs> how do I explain it like how it's like she's looking right at you but also like through you and like there is so much power and like the face in general that I decided to focus in on that and like instead of like the full body like I usually do and like thinking about like how do I explain this there, it, like, to me, there's always, there's a connection, like, energetically between me as an artist and when I'm minting on any blockchain. And because when you create something, there is an energy transfer. Like, I, using my energy, even if I'm creating something digital, it's like I'm using my energy to create that. And then when I am putting it on the blockchain, in my mind, it's like I, like, connecting my energy then to the blockchain. And like, and then that connects it to the, you know, international network of energy of like other artists and everything else going on on the blockchain. So it's like, just like, to me, I view everything kind of like as an energy exchange in that way. And there is a difference because when she, like Judith told me that it was going to be in ordinals, like to me, there is a difference in minting, like inscribing an ordinal and minting something that links to an image like there is fundamentally on an energetic level like I feel the difference when I am putting the artwork out there and so I really like started like playing with this image and like leaning into that thought of like when you have this puny little human brain <laughs> that is making art and like kind of understands like how all these energy exchanges are happening. And then when you go to actually inscribe the art or like interact with it, like sometimes it is like a psychedelic experience. Like the, it's really hard to explain. And also I am someone who's done like a ton of psychedelics to help like heal like trauma issues so it's like it does tell like a little bit of my personal story but it's also kind of how like I view interacting with the blockchain in general if that makes any sense and also I just wanted it to look dope like <laughs> that's like the baseline it's like a sticker should just look dope and like should be like cool looking and evocative when you look at it and like a woman like crying gold and like you know, like, there's so much to unpack with, like, the imagery in it that, like, I like to leave that to other people, but, like, to unpack, like, what the symbolism means to them. But, yeah, overall, that's kind of where I was going with it. And, yeah, again, I'm super excited to be part of this. I don't know, like, I could ramble forever. And I'm also, like I said, tired. So maybe a little disjointed right now. <laughs> Thanks for walking us through the background. I really like that discussion of, of transferring energy onto the blockchain. I, I appreciate in this image the embedded Bitcoin that's in the visage of the, the figure and it's definitely yeah. a bit psychedelic as you describe. Yeah, it's like it's like the blockchain becomes like part of you the longer you're doing this. And it's like it's like I guess I was trying to like 
get lean into that feeling. I think that's really what I'm trying to explain right now, where it's like you become so interconnected with it. And I think I know other artists who are really sensitive to like energy things. They like feel that and agree with me on these things. But I think it's one of those unspoken aspects of being a crypto artist because we don't want people to think we're crazy <laughs> being like, oh, but you know, like we're kind of low key doing magic and like, you know, we're doing all these energy exchanges. It's like, we don't, we just don't talk about it. Cause I think we just all kind of implicitly understand that we all understand what's happening. If that makes any sense. But yeah, the Bitcoin on the ear is like literally like me just thinking like, yeah, it's like part of me. It's part, of, it's not my whole identity, but it's become part of my identity. And then also like the buns, like, cause it's kind of a self-portrait, the buns, I always wear the buns. So it's like kind of like a nod to that too, of like something visual of like my identity that is always out there, like on a superficial level, but also like how it's meaningful, like having something in one of the buns, like I'm always holding it with me. It's always in my thoughts, that type of thing. It's a great artwork and, and definitely makes for a great sticker. Let's turn to Angie. Angie, your work for the crypto sticker box is punk art. Could you tell us what that piece involves? Yeah, hi. Again, thanks to everyone, Particle Collection, for hosting this and to Judith and the sticker thing team for involving me in the project. I'm really excited to be part of it. I think what attracted me first was the thought of making things that are normally throwaway, like stickers, into this beautiful tangible collection inside a, a beautifully crafted box and parachute. I love the physical aspects of this. And I felt like my role was to kind of represent punk art, of course. And I'd been kind of messing around with some of my old artwork in creating a Laura based on my old artwork and trying to kind of teach it how to create my artwork the way that I would create it which has been really difficult, actually. I, I always joke and say I find it easier to create stuff that I want myself rather than using AI because I find it more difficult to get the AI to do what I want it to do. But I'm really getting into that challenge of working with the AI and trying to train it to do things in the way that I want to do it. So this is an example of that. So I basically uh, fed in a load of my old drawings and cartoons and then programmed the AI to come up with a sort of powerful, empowered female punk, basically. And it came up with a huge selection that I kind of refined down and, and worked on and then hand-painted, changed some of the line work because it still doesn't get the line work quite the way I want it. And I find with the line work that I end up kind of sculpting the line work to be exactly the thickness I want it to be. So I'll use a regular pen to draw the line work and then I'll kind of cut into it with a mask or an eraser to get the kind of brokenness that I want in the line work. And then I feed the drawings that the AI has produced and I've edited back into the Laura again. So it's kind of like an ongoing process. So yeah, I, I use that. It doesn't have any huge, you know, intellectual concept behind it. It's just a piece of punk art really representing the art that I grew up making in the 1970s and 80s. It's a wonderful example of punk art. And it, it's interesting to hear about your process behind this, because this this feels distinctly like one of your works. And it, it's great to hear that you're engaging with new forms of technology. But it sounds like like with a lot of generated imagery, both playing with the the, the text and refining it, and also curating the outputs is significant to this. Can you tell us a little bit more about that curation process involved in, in choosing what was an appropriate image for you to use related to this? Yeah, I I, I use Alias, um, so alias.art, so on Alias I'd say, and I also use Eden.art as well. Um, and both of them produce slightly different things that I like, but neither of them produce things exactly how I like. So I created a Laura on each of them. And then the Eden.art creates a lot of the more 3D stuff that I like, whereas Alias tends to be really good for the line work. So I created like hundreds of images on both of them, so Eden and I think mainly on Eden. 
So I kind of used Eden for the poses more and the the composition. And then I took that into Alias, applied the kind of line work Laura, which applied the style to it. And then I take it into Procreate, which is where I um, sort of manually customize it to, to get it exactly how I want it to look. Thank you for taking us behind the scenes to hear about that process. It's, again, a beautiful work of art and also makes for a striking sticker. So perfect addition to this collection. Let's turn to... Thank you. And it's got okay. me hooked on making stickers, so I'm making more now. That's wonderful to hear. I imagine an unintended consequence of participating in this project. All right, we'll turn to Felix next. Would you be able to tell us a little bit about the Switch Dude, your contribution to the crypto sticker box? Hello. Yes. Yes. And, and the first, uh, also, uh, thanks a lot for to Judith for having me inside this project. And it's really, it's really an, an honor for me because I feel like the young, uh, <laughs> the small baby in the group. Because so considering all the OGs uh, that are parts of this, and so I'm really happy to be part of the, this project. And the the switch dude is. It's really connected to all work I have been doing for a year and or two. So it's the same character, this crypto dude that's with this square head and all talking about crypto things. And and re more recently about, so it evolved into the Cypher dude project I have going on. And so that piece, I thought, uh, because it's, really special edition or a special piece with a sticker or something like special that comes to ERL. And so I thought to make a literal trans transposition of Cypher Dude, a smart contract into a new piece that is this Switch Dude. And maybe I should quickly explain what this Cypher Dude smart contract is doing. It's allowing the owners to write messages on the blockchain and to communicate somehow with other wallets or anyhow. And so that character is, as you see, he's like a, an old switchboard, like an old telephonic switchboard. He's plugging, unplugging wires and connecting wallets. And so that's the general composition. And in, inside it, you'll, you'll have binary on the background. And uh, that's something I'll always do, like put a meaning inside every small detail. And for example, the background is a binary transcription of a quote from Hal Finney about computer and freedom. Uh, it's a famous quote. And and then every square, every squares that Jude is uh, plugging wires to is, is a wallet, a Bitcoin wallet. And and then the screen the strings are Bitcoin transaction hash. So you have this composition, and then the overall overall aesthetic is really like connected to the cipher dude and crypto dude pieces. And yes, that's about it. Thanks, Felix. It, this uh, certainly aligns with your your cipher dudes, and it almost feels like this character is is living on the blockchain. It's nice to hear you talk about that transcription. That's shown behind the figure. Uh, and just to confirm as well, because I've seen two different versions of this, you've got a dynamic ordinal, I believe? Yeah, true. Yeah, exactly. The the, the ordinal is a, is a, a GIF uh, version of that, of the, this piece. So animated with the, and and sticker uh, version is a still image. It, uh, it's like a Shiva goddess, you know, that has many arms. It's uh, like ubiquitous actions. Because somehow the flag is, and also the digital world is kind of doing this. So that's how it, and in the sticker version, it's still, and you have different, it's much more bigger image. And the ordinal version is really pixelated is due to the, the format uh, constraints. Yes. Well, it's exciting to have the, the two different variations out there. Thank you once again for walking us through that. Let's turn to Reinhardt who created Stick a Smack Man for this project, part of your ongoing Smack Man figure that you've used for a number of other works. Can you tell us a bit about the, the background to this piece? 
Yes. First of all, I too want to thank you, thank everyone involved for inviting me to this really awesome project. Um, Judith in particular, I had the pleasure to meeting her in Lisbon. And I think I gave you a sticker, didn't I? So maybe this got me the invitation. So when when Judith approached me, I was immediately very intrigued by the project. And I, I pretty much said yes right away because I really wanted to be in. And the, the very next moment, and I'm, I'm sure some of my colleagues have experienced that too, you're like, okay, now I, I'm in, but what am I going to do? So I started thinking there were some restrictions with the size and complexity. So it needed to be something relatively well, simple may not be the right word, but, you know, it's something that meets those restrictions. And so I thought, well, maybe I could do the Smackman, the piece I'm known for in the space. Uh, we just had the five-year anniversary in December last year. So the very first Smackman was minted back in December 2018. And uh, <clears throat> so I thought this would be a nice thing to do, and it would actually be the first Smackman of 2024. And, you know, maybe it was a little bit like those manifestations I, I hear all the time because I wanted to get my Smackman on, on Bitcoin, you know, as an ordinal. And I couldn't quite figure out how to do it, but I kept thinking about it and I, I just wanted to, to get it, get an ordinal with the, with the Smackman. And here comes the crypto sticker thing and so they more or less did that for me you know so it was it was ideal from from my point of view and Judith liked the idea so I needed to come up with new incarnations so to speak people always ask me what this Magman actually is and you know back in 2018 when I started experimenting with NFTs nobody really knew what what, what this was going to be and uh, were more or less just playing, I just took this detail from a larger glass painting that I'd done a few years before, and I named it Smackman just because I thought it sounded nice. You know, there is no deeper meaning to it. So that much to the history of it. So now I had to do a new one, and there had has been one before with a tattoo on his head, and I thought, you know, stickers, tattoo, and all of this, this really works well together. So I thought I'd just get him a new tattoo and actually put the name of the piece into this tattoo and, you know, try to get this classic tattoo feel with certain common elements that are often used in tattoo, like these roses. But I also wanted it combined with my own visual language, you know, those machine parts that I always put into my work. And then I wanted it to be really like super cheerful and happy. So I wanted to create a surrounding that was like almost like rays, but in a way that was different from the stickers I'd done before. And then you always see something somewhere and you're like, oh, I like this idea. And for me, it was this halftone pattern, you know, those, those orange dots that create sort of a gradient. And, you know, when you see these things, you always have to figure out how it's done. So, you know, like many times before, I had to study some tutorials and, and figure out how to do it. And I finally found a way that I found pleasing. And again, I combined this surrounding area, you know, the elements around this magnet with my machine parts, the Venus machine aspect. And uh, actually on the bottom, there is almost like a window where you can look into my, well, I don't know if I should call it inner world. It, be misleading and I'm not really a cyborg, but uh, well, maybe I am, I don't know. But I like those uh, technical things and I always put those in. So, and then the last aspect was uh, to make it really pop. So I put it on this bold yellow background to really make it very present and then, like I said, very cheerful. And <clears throat> when Empress Trash talked about the energy earlier in her work. I, I feel the same way because like that tattoo, I, I draw this on a on a tablet. Uh, it's a Wacom tablet on my PC. And I spend a lot of time, there's several days to, to really draw it with a digital 
pencil, you know, like a graphite pencil, but just a digital version of it. And then first you develop all the elements and then you draw it. And by spending all this time and, and cross hatching and drawing, I think you put a lot of yourself and a lot of your own energy into this artwork. And so I think this too is loaded with Reinhard Schmidt energy. And uh, so, yeah, that's the smack man. It's, it's certainly a vibrant work. Again, resonates with the, the sticker theme. It's one of those collectibles that you'd like to have. And I'm happy that you walked us through some of the elements. I hadn't noticed the tattooed name on, on the head of this piece until I zoomed in in a bit more detail. So that's an exciting element that you've added. Thank you for walking Thank us you. through that, Reinhard. Uh, Judith, let's turn back to you for a moment. Getting into a bit of a broader discussion, crypto sticker culture is a, a unique part of IRL in-person experiences. It's especially visible during crypto conferences. What role do you see stickers playing at those events? Yes, I started thinking about it when I had to write a text about what we are doing with the crypto sticker box. <laughs> Before it was just, oh, cool, I got stickers, got so many stickers from the last conference. But indeed, it's it's really interesting what is happening there because it's yeah, something you get from artists mainly. You have, of course, all these companies who are giving away their business cards and, and stickers to make just advertising advertisements. But when you get a sticker from an artist, it's really a personal thing. You know, they don't walk around and distribute them to to every everyone, but you usually talk to people and then maybe there is a point where you exchange stickers. And yeah, first of all, it's maybe because of a certain relation you, you have between the people who are talking to each other, or it's more that a certain relation starts to exist once you exchange the stickers. I don't know exactly, but maybe it's a mix of, of both. When I, as someone who is getting a sticker, has a look at it, you of course have a first impression, you like it or you don't like it. But however, it, it really gives you an insight, insight into the, the work of an artist, <clears throat> their ideas, their style, their words, their skills. And you suddenly have, yeah, something like, a business card, but a very, very beautiful business card, who is not just giving you a name and an address, but really much, much more. So that's 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 one really important part because it really connects you. You know, another part is once you you own stickers, you of course show them, and when you start showing them to others, you identify yourself with a product or people or artists or a certain style of art it it gives you maybe also access to to a community it it can unite you it can separate you depending on who is around you know and in the end when you have a look at your sticker collection from the last events you also can see a bit of your own history which which took part in the crypto space. So it's it's really a, a whole complex. It's not just having a nice sticker and you're putting it on your laptop or whatever, but it's yeah, it, it's a little bit more, I guess. And this was mainly our intention to show that there is not just stickers, but there's a sticker culture. And the sticker culture is really important for the whole space. And it's also important for each single person because it gives you a little bit of yeah, identification. It shapes you, I guess. Yeah. I really like that nod to, to sticker culture. I saw Felix wrote a comment, stickers in crypto art are, are proof of IRL experiences, kind of like the original physical version of the PO app. I think we'll turn to Empress as well. And I'll, I'll throw another question in there as well for you, Empress Trash. You I've seen posted examples of your stickers. What drives you to, to want to make and share stickers at some of these crypto events and anything else you want to weigh in on? 
that's exactly what I want. I wanted to share like the artist's perspective of like, like back up exactly everything that Judas said, but then there is like, there's more, there's always more when it comes to this stuff, but like specifically for me, like, and I know a lot of other artists, like sticker culture comes out of like street art and it comes out of doing like slap tags where it's essentially like a really easy way to like, get your art out there in the public physical space and like be present and be part of the conversation ongoing conversation of like what is happening in like street art in your area and like it's an accessible way so it's like all like a lot of artists who come from like relative nothing like you know come from poverty live in like you know don't have a lot of resources to like launch an art career they'll do stickers to get their message or their voice across or their art across and it even like goes down to like i i where i come from like we used to go to the post office and steal mailing labels because they're so weather resistant and then you draw on them with like sharpie or paint marker and so you have an instant sticker and you can like go put that out in the wild then and it actually like they last a long time so like for me that's how I got started in like sticker culture in like the 90s (laughs) when I was a teenager doing hood rat shit so and like with that like stickers have always been kind of like part of like merchandising as an artist because it's just it's part of it and like specifically when it comes to like crypto events also as an artist like we actually like give each other like a bulk of each other's stickers when we like live in different regions of the world so when we go back to our respective places we can tag each other's art <laughs> like we that's something like quite a few of us do like i have piles of still and i go and i tag around mexico city here but i have piles of stickers of the same sticker from like different artists i absolutely love and it's like so when i'm out slap tagging just for fun cuz it's just a fun pastime to do i'll put my friend stickers up too and this so that it goes even further beyond just like trying to get collectors attention it's like it's artists supporting artists it's like a very for me physical representation of it and like even at conferences like sometimes because us artists we don't necessarily like the big events like we don't like having to talk to like a million people we're all kind of like weird introverts and like I for one like get burnt out really quickly at events and conferences And, like, I've even, like, stepped away with friends to go walk and slap tag (laughs) while at conferences just to, like, recenter myself and come back. And it always works. And it's, like, so, I don't know. There's so many layers to, like, what's going on with it beyond just marketing. But, I mean, fundamentally, all of it is just to get people to see our art. And the because the more people who see your art and the more people who see your name as an artist, just like you get more like eventually it just gets to a tipping point where you become a known artist. And so it's all part of that. It's just it really is. Yeah. Great context on the background to some of the, the sticker culture and where it evolved from and also the, the collaborative approach related to it. Angie, let's turn it over to you. The only thing I totally agree with um, what Empress has been saying. The only thing I'd add to that is it's like a way of saying I see you to kindred spirits. So it's a way of communicating with each other. You know, you see a sticker on a bus stop while you're waiting for the bus and you know that someone that understands you has been there. And that's really important because it makes you feel not alone in the world and that you you know, because the media kind of tells you that everyone's bad and everyone hates you. And and then you see this kind of subversive language, you know, graffiti, stickers, street art that is telling you something different, which is the truth, which is there are lots of good people like you in the world. And I think that's what I love about stickers is they're accessible. So they're not expensive. They're usually free. So anyone can get them. Anyone can create their own art with them so they can combine stickers together and decorate their 
their own um, belonging system, but they can also like use them as a way of communicating with other people, almost like flyers and stuff. Thanks for that, Antje. I've I've shared a post here that you made of some stickers that you had received in the past. I, I would love to hear, what do you enjoy about collecting stickers? And you just mentioned display at the end. How do you display these? Where do you wind up putting them up so that they're a part of your your day-to-day activities? I have them all over the place. So I have them on my laptops and my phone cases and places that everyone would probably put stickers. But I also have, like, I do sort of customized furniture with things. So even things like, you know, when I get a parcel, if it has fragile tape on it, you know, the tape that has print on it, I take that tape off and I stick it onto a piece of furniture. I'll I'll put some photos up later. And I've also got collected things that I find at charity shops, which are plates that have been designed in the same way. Like, I think they're probably from Cuba or something, but they're... um, Plates that have, it's almost like decotage, like someone's taken stickers from cigars and things like that, and then they've put them together to create a decoration on a plate and then varnished it. So I also collect things like that. But yeah, I peel stickers off things all the time as well, and then I'll stick them onto things, but almost like a collage style to try and subvert whatever the message is on the sticker. So like I'll take a sticker off a I don't know, cigarette packet or a, you know, jam jar or something. And then I'll take letters from it and use them as stickers to kind of create a collage sticker. Oh, that's exciting. Making one larger piece out of many. That's that's a beautiful image. Would love to see some examples of those. Reinhard, I know you do a lot of uh, sharing of, of stickers at IRL events. And I've seen that some of yours include a QR code linking to other digital works. Can you tell us about some of that significance between the the physical and digital connection that stickers support? (laughs) So many good comments have already been made. It's hard to add anything of value. But for me, coming from traditional art, this combination of, of physical and digital art has always been very interesting. When I first had the idea of making stickers for real life event. I think it was uh, Paris last year. I didn't even know that so many other artists were making stickers. I just thought, you know, that that sounds like a nice idea. Also made those buttons that you could put on a shirt with a needle. So I just thought, you know, I'd I'd have something that people could take with them if they liked the smack man. And uh, like I said, I wanted, I was one of the most important aspects of my art is to create happiness. And we live in a world with so much bad news all day long. So I want to create the counterbalance to that and uh, you know, make people smile when they look at my work and, and just really feel really happy from within when they, and hopefully getting inspired by that. And so, you know, I'm a little bit, a little bit older, so i not used to always having a mobile device with me where I could always look at the things I like. So. You know, having a, a physical piece that you could take with you and a sticker you could put inside a sketchbook or on a, on, a, on a purse or whatever, something that you could have with you and you could always take your favorite stickers with you. So I, I always thought this was a nice way to surround yourself with your favorite art and take it along or like Empress Trash said earlier, even share it with the world, you know, by sticking on, sticking it onto things. I had to get used to that thought because, you know, when I was in Lisbon, I think it was the first time I actually put my sticker on a, on a lamp pole. I don't know how you say it on a, on a public lamp. And uh, I'm like, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to do this, but you know, it just was, it just felt cool at the time. So I did it from then on. I, I started sharing my stickers and also when I had some leftover from friends, which I don't always have so many, and I'm actually a little reluctant to to stick stickers I have from others somewhere else, not because I don't want to share their art, but I I want to find the most valuable place for that sticker. So, you know, this can be quite stressful because you think, well, if I put it here, it would be nice, but maybe I'll find a better place or maybe I want to put it somewhere else. And the problem with a sticker is it, it just stuck and you can't just peel it off and, and use it again. 
So I think this idea of, of Judith with this book where you can actually remove them is a really cool idea, particularly for someone like me who can, someone who can never make up their mind. <laughs> so you could actually reverse the decision. So, but anyways, uh, I guess I'm, I'm babbling, but yeah, I like the idea to having a, a physical piece to go along with my digital work that can be shared with the world in this way. Great comments there, Reinhardt. I'd love to pick up the thread on, on what you had just mentioned as well and turn things over to Judith. You mentioned this this book that allows for reusing stickers. I share your same plight of being worried about where to place them. So it would be great, Judith, if you could talk a little bit about, about the book itself and how it allows this reuse and also some of the, the innovative ways you've thought about display and how people may be able to display some of the items that they, they purchase through the, the crypto sticker box. Okay, so first the book, it's it's a small book. Uh, you know, it's it's a six format, which is about 10, 10, 10 to 14 centimeters, centimeters, I guess. Yeah, it has about 90 pages. It has cover, a sleeve integrated in the cover where you can put your stickers inside. And yeah. The idea to have pages where you can detach the stickers again was <laughs> maybe I'm I'm structured like Reinhardt. I cannot decide if I would like to <laughs> stick the sticker or not. And it's it's maybe a good way to have a compromise and to have besides these pages also real paper leaves is just because we thought it would be nice if you could collect memories, you know, write down maybe a few things like in a diary or collect sketches from artists, stuff like this, you know, it's just like, like a thing you take with you wherever you go. That's the idea behind the book. The idea to have an integrated display in the box was just because it's, yeah, the box is, uh, the, the, the box is a collector's item. And as a collector, you, might want to show what you own and you can not see the stickers through the wooden box cover but yeah by having a glass pane integrated you really can pick one sticker at a time put it behind the glass and have the box as a display that was the idea yeah it's it's a great idea and pleased to see the type of thoughtful preparation made for for even using the the box itself as a, a bit of a display case that's that's just great it's an exciting project through and through i want to be sensitive to everyone's time i know felix had to run already i'll open it up if any of our guests wanted to make any other comments or if someone's got a question related to the the crypto sticker thing or or some sort of sticker culture related item that you're just dying to share feel free to request the mic while we wait just for a moment for anything further Judith maybe you could let us know where can people find out more information about this about these items about the crypto sticker thing generally where would you link them to we have a website which is the crypto sticker thing that's xyz and that's that's the main page where you can find all information about the box and the book and then we have x where we are i guess it's sticker thing that's our two main sources we are communicating through x and everything we are doing like yeah the box and the book and in the future maybe also sticker packs is yeah collected on our website the crypto sticker thing sticker packs that sounds exciting now you've you've piqued my interest it takes me back to to youth and some of the the excitement around uh around collecting there maybe there will be a future sticker album with some of those numbered spaces that we have to fill in all of that could be very exciting possibilities to come. Empress, Angie, or, or Reinhardt, do any of you have anything else that you'd like to share before we wind down here? Not particularly, but just thank you for the time and space. And I love stickers. <laughs> that's, that's about it. And I'm super, again, like just super excited for this and just think it's really cool. And like the whole idea of even trying to elevate stickers, because it's like, 
having this like beautiful display box that is like custom to like this whole thing and it's like it's like to me it's like stickers have always been something that has been told to me that is like this lowbrow thing that I've had a love for like people kind of look down on it like oh not not like horribly look down but it's not like stickers are considered like this like high art form you know what I mean and so I like for me I just think this is so cool because it's like hey let's let's elevate the sticker let's like give it this beautiful display and like all of that stuff and I just wanted to throw out there like I put stickers on everything you were asking Angie but like I have them on my Roomba even which is like the funniest thing to me because my Roomba is going around with like all my favorite like friend stickers on it and it's like I don't know. It just like, it makes me laugh all the time. But in another way that I've seen them like displayed by collectors is they'll get like a big frame and then like, just like not even like stick them on anything. They'll like kind of use like kind of like tape or something and like kind of collage them out and then frame them like that. Like I've seen collectors do that. I haven't done that. I'm just too lazy, honestly, and busy to like do like a DIY project like that. But yeah, so there's like infinite ways to display stickers, but and non destructively. But I love the box and I love all of this. Thank you. Thank you so much I, for those comments. <clears throat> Go ahead, Angie. Sorry. I'd just like to add that I think projects like this are so. Whoop, sorry, that's my dog barking in the background. <laughs> yeah, I'd just like to add how important I think projects like this are for keeping artists' hopes up and keeping the community going and I really appreciate people bringing us together to work on collaborative projects like this because I think this is the way that we can keep things going in crypto art and I think working together is the most important thing um, because individually it's really difficult for us to survive and I think working together is the way forward so I really appreciate Judith and the team and you guys Particle for supporting us. Absolutely. I, I would echo that. It's it's wonderful to see. It feels like it speaks to, I, I know we all have bemoaned the the fading away of async art, a collaborative platform that's all out of partnerships. I think this is this feels like it really resonates with that that collaborative element that's been at the heart of some of the the best elements of, of crypto art. And so big, big shout out to the crypto sticker thing, Judith and the team who've been able to bring this together and and allow us to enjoy so many different types of artwork in in a unique way. It really does resonate with some of the early ethos of the the crypto space. Thank you to all of our guests for being here, to the crypto sticker thing in Judith, and of course to Empress Trash, Angie Taylor, Reinhard Schmidt, Felix, 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 but grateful for the time that you could give us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to subscribe and leave us a review. And don't forget to join us at our next collector's call.